I'm here this week with five tips for beginner landscape photographers. So when you're first getting started with landscape photography, it can get very overwhelming very quickly. You've got people throwing composition advice at you. You've got people throwing exposure advice and gear, this or that, or this camera does this, or this camera doesn't do this, so you should do that. And it gets all, you know, a little overwhelming when really what you need is just a few simple tips to start practicing as soon as you go out. So I've picked out five tips for beginning landscape photographers. The first three tips center on technique, things you can start practicing today with no problem and they don't cost any money. It's just a different way to approach a scene and think about a scene to help simplify what you're out there to do. The last two tips do involve pieces of gear that I think are pretty essential to landscape photographers as they start moving forward. And so I do want to include them as tips that can help make your landscape photography better, even though I try not to emphasize gear too much. So with that, let's dive into the first tip. So my first tip is keep the scene simple. And this one you may have heard before. Painters, when they paint, they paint in what they want in the scene. The art of photography is a little more about removing what you don't want in the scene. So it's important when you approach what you're gonna photograph, let's take for example a waterfall, and you look at it and you line it up in the camera, assuming your subject is the waterfall, look around, what is detracting from it? Is there some rock that's cropping into the frame on the side, or is there a big tree branch that's coming in and not even making an effort to frame the scene, it's just jutting into your picture? Take a look at it, take a moment to think about it, and think about simplifying that scene so it's pretty much obvious what your subject is in what you're photographing. A lot of times with beginner landscape photographers, I'll see these scenes and are pulled back and it's just got lots of clutter around the edges and it just distracts the viewer's eye. As a photographer, it's our job to sort of direct the viewer to the subject. So you can do that by simplifying the scene. So the next time you're out photographing, just take a look at that scene Identify your subject and then start subtracting elements either by moving closer, changing your, t your focal length, or you know, recomposing the image so that you highlight the subject that you want to be the subject of attention. And that will help improve your landscape photography and reduce the amount of clutter and confusion that might be in your landscape photography images. So the next tip is play with perspective. So I photograph in an area near me that's pretty popular. There's thousands and thousands of images online of certain places I go to. And so it's really easy to walk up and you see the obvious shot. You stand here, you take the picture, and there's thousands of others of those like that out on the internet. And that's fine, get that shot. It's always, I'm a big fan of collecting those types of shots too. I see nothing wrong with it. But if you want your photography to stand out, you need to train your eye to look at things a little differently. Show people that are gonna be viewing your images something they haven't seen online before. And the way to do this is change your perspective. Bring the camera up high, bring the camera down low, Look for angles. You can move off to the right, off to the left. Is there a framing element that's off to one side or the other that could be a different look of a popular spot? And really take the time to work that shot and find those angles. Change what's in the foreground, change what leads into the subject. So be cautious of just walking up, taking your camera, setting it on the tripod, and just taking the shot that everybody else has taken. Go ahead and grab that shot. It's fun to have, you know, I enjoy it. But then take the time to look around that scene and find other pieces to highlight. You can also look at zooming in on things. A lot of people do the big grand wide angle shot. Zoom in, use that perspective. To, so instead of the wide angle shot, do a closer of more of a small scene shot. Highlight some detail that's really attracting you. So when you're out photographing, watch that perspective and try to think about approaching a scene differently than maybe you've seen others do in the past. So this next tip is about light, and I almost didn't include this one because I think it can be a rut that we fall into. But as a beginner landscape photographer, shoot at golden hour. That's the hour after sunrise and an hour before sunset. The sun is usually low in the sky. It's a nice soft light, a little bit of a golden hue on it. So it just is a very pleasing and very forgiving light. So that'll let you sort of focus on some of the techniques and things like that, still walk away with pleasing images and have a slightly easier time with light. Now, like I said, I almost didn't include this particular tip because I see too many people say, I can only shoot at golden hour and that's it. And you're losing just hours and hours of every day. And if you've traveled a long way to go do some photography and you think you can only shoot an hour after sunrise and an hour before sunset, you're gonna miss out on a lot of photographic opportunities. You can just look at Instagram and there's proof that you can shoot in all types of light. But if you sort of learn in that golden hour, you learn what works, what doesn't, and then you can start to move and practice in those more adverse conditions. Maybe full sunlight out in the middle of the day, 
but you'll have a better sense of how to read the light and see the light and adapt to it so that you can still capture great images. So despite me saying shoot in golden hour, that's where you can get some pleasing images. Don't limit yourself completely to that. As you grow with your skill set, be sure to get out there and don't put a self-limiting belief in place. Okay, tip number four, we start to move into the gear. And the first one is a tripod. And I've done lots of videos on tripods from tripod reviews to tips for using a tripod and all sorts of things. I'll link to a few of them down in the description below. But as a landscape photographer, don't underestimate the value of a tripod. You don't have to shoot from it all the time, but I find tripod does a few things for me. One, it slows me down a little bit, makes me think about my image and then get it set up there and work on fine tuning my composition from the tripod. The other thing it does is it starts to open up the door to more advanced techniques. Things like long exposure of the water, the silky smooth waterfalls or longer shutter speeds and that tripod helps you use a longer shutter speed to get that effect in the water. Landscape photographers, we like to shoot with lower ISOs, ISO 64, ISO 100. Again, that lends itself towards longer shutter speeds. So you need a stable platform to shoot from. So good quality tripod, will help you keep those lower ISO values so you don't have a lot of noise or have a lot of impact on your image quality. Then beyond that, as you further your landscape photography technique and advance your skills, you're gonna start looking at doing exposure bracketing, or you're gonna start looking at doing focus stacking. All of those tools are easier from a tripod. So I think a tripod is a great first investment as a landscape photographer to get out there and start photographing because it's sort of a piece of equipment that's gonna serve you well from everything for those long exposures, low ISOs, and some more advanced techniques like focus stacking and exposure bracketing. So if this looks like a hobby that you're gonna stick with, a tripod would be one of my early investments once you've got your camera body and a lens. And my fifth and final tip for today is another piece of hardware and is the circular polarizer. Again, camera filters is something I've talked about frequently in the past, circular polarizers, ND filters, and we've talked about screw-on filters and magnetic filters and all sorts of things. But if I could only own one filter for my landscape photography, it would be a circular polarizer or a CPL. What it does is it helps remove the glare, gives you a little more saturation to colors. So if you find yourself photographing water scenes, waterfalls, creeks, early morning when there's just dampness on the rocks, or even if you're in settings with lots of foliage out there, whether it be autumn colors in the fall or the greens of a forest, a circular polarizer will help give it just a little more saturation, cut through that glare, and I find it's a really pleasing look. So as you've acquired your camera gear with your camera body, your lens, you've got your tripod, and you're sort of looking for something else to help improve your landscape photography, a CPL would be one of the first things I would look at. If you don't have one, still get out there and photograph. Just as you're looking to improve and you're figuring out that you're gonna stick with this hobby for a little while longer, a CPL would be one of the early pieces of gear that I sort of wish I'd started using a little sooner in my landscape photography journey. And that's it. That's my five tips for today for beginner landscape photographers. Like I said, I know it's real easy to get overwhelmed with all the information coming in. And sometimes it's nice to just sort of break it down to a few key things to start working on. And then as you sort of master those, improve at those, you can go look at other tip videos and start incorporating other tips. But I find when you're overwhelmed, you end up just not going out. And that's not what this should be, be all about. It should be going out, practicing and doing that. So those are my five tips. I hope you found them helpful. And if you did, please hit that like button and if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, and mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me. And thank you for watching.